everyone. When I did the video on doing, uh, you know, the guinea pig code, I said in there that I would do a video just to say hello to all my other wonderful animals that I own. Um, and this is the reason that I started YouTube. These are my little reasons, and I love them so much. These are Ren and Stimpy, and as you can see, they've got their little their table. They've got this. Um, there they go. There's Ren there in the background. Um, <laughs> and then they've got their water bottle. As you can see, that is a metal guard on their water bottles, and it's hanging from the glass. Um, they've got their kebabs and their bridge, like I say. Um, I'll go through their little home and say hello. There you go. There's Ren. And there's Stimpy. And for everyone who has watched Ren and Stimpy, as soon as Stimpy decides he's going to wake up and show off, um, you'll see why he's called that. And yes, in the background there is my salt and pepper pots. <laughs> I just keep them there so they're out of the way of small fingers. But I'll let the agreement. These are brothers and they, they are an old pair now. They're the oldest gerbils I got. Actually they're the oldest pets I've got. They're the oldest out of all of them. Everyone else is under a year old. Um or or just turned a year. But these are three so but they're still healthy and going and going well. This is like a little bridge that a friend gave to me. I have bought another one of these. Um, and I buy like a lot of my plus, um, a lot of my animal toys on Zoo Plus. Um, I think that that is very good value for money. The only downside to it is you you have to buy in bulk. Um, I don't buy feed or hay or anything from there. I just buy toys. So like these kebabs come from there, and they're only like one pound something. I bought this bridge, and that was what I think it was like one ninety nine. Um, these actually come from the range, so if you have a, uh, the range near you, you can get these. I'm not sure how much these are because in all of my gerbil tanks you'll see that I've got um, this shelf. Um, sometimes, you know, one of them has been cut to length and that's on my two girl gerbil tanks. Um, but these were given to me from a friend of mine who took some baby gerbils off me. Um, they've got their food bar in the back. Uh, so, yeah, it was basically, uh, we're really good friends now. Uh, say hello. Say hello. Hello. You're going to say hi. Hey, boys. That's Ren and Stimpy anyway. They are very, very friendly. I have been bit by Ren once. And the whole time that we've had him, he's the only one to have bitten me as well. And that was only because I tried introducing him to a different gerbil. And it was a lady gerbil. <laughs> um, and he didn't like her very much. <laughs> I tried in, I've tried to introduce a lone male into these as well. And he was a baby. He was like only about six weeks old. And Ren again hates him. So... No, that's cool. Ren is the, you know, he's never going to like another gerbil. He'll never be paired with another gerbil. And that's just the way it is. Some gerbils are like that. But I just find it amazing how we've got a gerbil with that horrible, like, that personality to hate every other gerbil. And yet he loves Stimpy. So I think he might be just gay for Stimpy or something. But there he is, right at the top. Let's see. There he goes. He likes to chew the, um... The metal bits, like that. He does like chewing them. Hello! You saying hi? <laughs> okay, and then we've got another pair. <laughs> Again, dribbles. Their tank is a bit dark looking. Um, and that... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just scoot children out of the way. Yeah, their tank's a bit dark looking, and that is only because they are in um, a black unit. They get a lot of light. There is light. It's just my phone doesn't pick it up very well. Um, oh. 
<laughs> She's already trying to escape. You can see her up there. Hello. Oh, you fell. You fell down, you silly, silly gerbil. Um, these are a male and female pair. Um, he is a sapphire gerbil and she is a nutmeg. Um, so these will produce black and Burmese babies. I was originally believed that he was a dove, um, but obviously genetics tell the truth. And doves and sapphires can be hard to tell apart because you get different shades. So he has got lovely ruby eyes. He's the only ruby eyed animal that we have. And as you can see, his tail isn't as long as the other gerbils. And it's not my fault, but what happened was he used to live um, with somebody else. And um, their child picked him up in the wrong way. And when gerbils are held wrong, they have an escape mechanism. And what that is, is to drop their tails. And that is what Nick, like, he's done. Um, so, yeah, he, he's learned to drop his tail. And that's why he hasn't got a full length tail. But he's fine. They've got like, a rope. Uh, they got their kebab. Their glass is dirty. <laughs> Again, they've got a metal guard. She's having a drink. They've got bed. They've got um, like a little stairs. And again, as you've seen, they've got their bridge. So that's them. His name's Nickelback, and her name's Lily. I didn't name these. They just kind of come with their names. Oh, look at these. Hello. Um, you would recognise this from my other video. And um, obviously, these are the piggies. And like always, Chevy's eating. <laughs> uh, and peanuts down here. There you go. Alright, so I'm just gonna pause the video a minute and then scoot to the other animals. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> this is the last gerbil cage. Um, well, tank rather. Um, so again, they have a kebab, they've got a lovely bridge, their water bottle, again metal guard, <laughs> their, their little tea, like table, TV, and their food bowl. And this here, <laughs> you can just see one of the tails, the black tail, um, sticking out. They've decided to make a bed. Now all that is, is we gave them um, toilet roll tubes and it still had toilet roll on the, like around it. Not a lot, but just enough. <laughs> And this is what they do. They chew it all up and they make a bed with it. Um, that thing there that's hanging is one of my old t-shirts and it was a hammock. And as you can see, they destroyed it. <laughs> um, I do put cuttlefish in the kebabs and these, uh, that green thing is, uh, what you know, one of those Chinese things that you put your finger in either end and it kind of gets stuck. That's all they are and they love them. They go nuts for them. But these really aren't big chewers. I mean, the biggest chewers I have are Ren and Stimpy. The next biggest chewers, I would say, would be Lily. And the only reason why she's a chewer is because she's an escape artist, so she's always trying to get out. Um, she comes out lots and lots and lots, but that gerbil just needs to be free. <laughs> Obviously, unfortunately, she's never going to be free, but we can give her the best life and uh, possible without being so bored. Um, just as a bit of a thing, um, I will not be keeping the breeding pairs of gerbils. Uh, that is only because I'm waiting for them to have the, a second litter. Um, hopefully that is followed by a third. They've had one litter already and they've never ever ever have an had another litter since. And it's been um, probably about four months now. Um, the reason being is, the reason why they're still together is because gerbils usually get pregnant straight away. So straight after they've had uh, their first litter. So I split the, um, the girls and the boys. I split the boys with dad. The girls stayed with mum. And I was waiting for this litter and no litter came. Um, I put, I sold the girls and once the girls had left, hello! <laughs> Um, I put um, dad back in with mum and then the three boys stayed on their own. 
Um, and I put Dad back in so that I could have another litter with hopefully um, as even as possible number of babies because I don't want her to be on her own, but I know she won't accept uh, another young gerbil that isn't related to her or isn't, you know, the dad. Um, so that is the reason why they're still together. But I do not have room for another two tanks of gerbils. So, you know, like I mean, like another one tank, rather, because I've already got one where they're both in. So I will be keeping one of them, and the other one will be rehomed with their baby. So they will be split into same-sex groups. Um, but right now we can't do that, and I've got loads and loads of experience, so it's not like I'm just some random person who's breeding animals and doesn't know what they're doing. So, but anyway, these are two girls in here, so these these will always be together. And she's a spotted Burmese, and she's spotted because Burmese should not have white on them. And she's got a white dot on her head, and she's got the lovely black colour points. Um, if you're not from the UK, I'm pretty sure they just call this a colour point black, and that's what she is. Um, and there's just an agouti gerbil. I didn't tell you the colours of uh, Ren and Stimpy. Uh, Stimpy, the ginger one, is a dark-eyed honey, and Ren is a polar fox. So that's if you wanted to know the uh, the, the technical colours of them. And last but not least, <laughs> we have some very, 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 very special ladies in here. These are lovely. I love these. Um, the only downfall for mice, this is what they are, they are fancy mice. Um, they're not very shy. They do come out and they are very cheeky and they do try to escape all the time. But that's fine. These are Sprite, Flake and Whisper. Now that one there is Flake and I can tell because she's got lovely white front feet. Sprite. She's got a white dot on her back, and she's got that funny-looking tail, the pattern on her tail. And Whisper happens, actually, luckily, find them so easy today. It's right there, and I know her because she's got dark brown feet on the front. Well, they both got brown feet, but uh, Flake's got white tips, like on the toes. And, you know, the other one hasn't, so... There's Sprite. I might have just got their names confused then, but oh, never mind. <laughs> um, but anyway, I know obviously they're the differences in all three of them. So, but because they all like live together, it, it does get confusing on um, like remembering their names and going, "Oh, have I already said that one? Is that the other one? Oh my god, can't remember." <laughs> so hello. Oh, not very focused on you. But these are lovely, absolutely lovely. And I would say, you know, if you're, um, if you know what you're doing, I mean, these don't really require any any special care. Um, they love to climb. They love climbing. These will be in a glass tank at some point. They won't be in this little little home. That's a bird toy as well, by the way. That one. Um, they need some food because <laughs> they've eaten it all now. Um, but yeah, they're they're not very hard to keep. They're not hard to look after, and they will eat almost anything that you have lying around the house. They'll eat your bread. They'll eat pasta. They'll, they'll eat absolutely anything. Um, they love to have mealworms. So if you're a reptile owner and you would like to have rodents as well, um, they they will eat. And you obviously a lot of reptile owners, especially of like geckos and stuff, have mealworms. So um, they they will love to eat these alive, of course. Um, I used to own reptiles, <laughs> but then I just thought the uh, the mice and everything was easier. The only thing that I um, have a problem with with the mice is that they don't stink, but they do have a unique smell to them. Uh, and after a while, that smell actually gets quite strong. And obviously, these are three female mice, and for male mice, their smell is ten times stronger. 
Sorry, I got my little one shouting in the background. Um, so their smell is ten times stronger, and every time I walk past these, I get a huge whiff of their smell. And like I say, it's not a horrible smell, but it's it's very strong. Um, and so I am desperately trying to find uh, like something I can use that can sort of stop my living room stinking of mice because it is a strong smell and it does stink like like it's, like I say it's not unpleasant but you know it's there you know it's not a normal household smell hello <laughs> um so if anybody knows any good ideas on how to eliminate pet odors without actually getting rid of the pet <laughs> I'd never ever get rid of these these only live for about um, a year two years anyway um just let me know because you know I try all these like Febreze and all these like uh, air fresheners you know that go in the um oh what is it in those things and it like goes like that at you <laughs> uh you know what I'm on about but the thing is that you spend probably about six pound on the on the refills for them and they only last like a week so I'm trying to find something that I don't mind spending more but lasts longer does that make any sense? So in the long run it's cheaper, but to begin with it could be more expensive. So, you know, I'm open to try anything. Um, I won't have lit candles in here, and people might say I'll just burn a candle. The reason why I won't have lit candles in here is because I have small children. So obviously, little fingers touching things. Um, and pretty much everything in the way my home is built, it's, it can be a bit of a pain. Oh, my zoom's gone funny. Um, like focus rather. So yeah, anyway, these are my friends. So yeah. I'm gonna put all these back now, and yeah. So I'll see you later. <laughs> bye bye.